Hey guys, what's going on? It's DJ TLM. You're watching DJ TLM TV and welcome to Turntablism Tips. In the last episode, I talked about backspinning, manually looping a track, and I discussed the basic techniques of backspinning. If you haven't seen that video, please check that video first before you watch the rest of this video. Link will be in the description box down below. Also, if you're not familiar with counting music and you don't know what beats, bars, and phrases are, please check my counting music tutorial and I'll leave a link to that in the description box as well. Now, just to remind you, you've probably been practicing if you saw the last episode and maybe you went from four bars to two bars to one bar, maybe even two beats. But let me just show you what I did last time, the basic backspin. So I have my markers ready at 12 o'clock. That's the position I choose right now. You can have the marker pointing at the needle or at three o'clock, whatever you choose if you're playing digitally. And if you're using CDJs, I believe that virtual marker is somewhere over there. But wherever it is, make sure that they're aligned. I have the beat begins there. Now the basic backspinning was throwing in the track on deck one. Cueing up your second deck. Rewinding the first one, cueing it up. That's your manual loop. The beat continues on as long as you want it to continue, as long as you keep on backspinning. Now that's cool, that's the basics. You need to learn that first. Get used to rewinding one track while the other one is playing. At first you're probably counting. Okay, this one is playing two bars now. I have to rewind that one two times, three times. You have to figure that out with your vinyl or with your controller. How many times you have to bring it back, that's gonna be different. I can tell you how much I have to bring it back on my vinyl, but on your CDJ or on your controller, especially if you have a small jog wheel, that might be different. I'm not sure, I haven't tried this with every controller. But you're thinking about those things, but once you get the hang of that, you think less and it becomes more of a second nature type of thing. To make it more interesting, I wanna incorporate scratches into backspinning. And what I mean by that is, instead of just letting it go on the one, and you can already see when I'm queuing it up, that I'm actually moving it back and forth, but you can't hear it because the fader is closed. Instead of doing that, I'm gonna open up the fader, I'm gonna scratch it a couple of times, and then let it go on the one. That sounds like this. Let me bring it back. That one's ready. That one's ready. All right, started with deck one. Cue up deck two, open up the fader. Rewind. One more time, rewind it, open the fader. Last time. All right, that adds a totally new dimension to backspinning and it makes it more interesting to me because first of all, I get to incorporate scratches, which I always like doing. But second of all, it doesn't sound like that loop anymore. Yes, you're still manually looping the track, but it has much more a much more organic feel to it because it's not just that same part of the beat repeating endlessly repeating because then it sounds like a loop and that's cool that's why you're doing it you want to loop that part but this way it becomes more alive plus adding scratches you can add different scratches every time you bring it in and i mean you don't have to scratch every time you can just let it go sometimes then use a scratch sometimes, but it opens up uh, a lot of room for variation. And that's what I really like about it, especially if you're backspinning for a longer time. If I'm just doing it for a couple of bars, then it doesn't get uh, boring that fast. But if I'm playing for a couple of MCs and they're rapping over the beat that I'm manually looping, I might be doing it for four or five minutes. Now to keep it more interesting for me, the MC and the crowd, scratching is a great opportunity for you to add more life to it so i hope you understand what i mean by that now i showed you just two different scratches right now or three you can scratch however you want to scratch now i'm also going to give you one more new variation to backspinning while we're at it so hopefully it's not too much but if it's working for you to do the normal backspins and it's also working for you to do the scratches maybe you can try this as well up until now, I've been starting my beat from the one. So my beat begins here. Every time I bring it back and 
start from that same kick drum again. Now, of course, you can also take a different part, a different part of that beat and start it from there. So for instance, instead of starting on this kick right here, I could take that snare. Now count with me. One, two. One, two. So that snare is on the two. So I can start that beat and then continue to backspin it, starting not from the one, but from the two. All right, so I have this one ready. This one is ready. Start it on the one. Let's let it go for one bar. And when the second bar starts, not on the one, but on the two, I bring in that snare drum. Count it with me. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So that's where I'm going to stop right now. I don't want to give you too many different options in one video because I know some of you are just too eager and you're going to try to do everything at once before you master the basics. So start with the basic backspinning, letting it go on the one, learning how to rewind it, learning how to count it, learning how to do it without really counting it but just by feeling and that only happens after you practice enough. Once you get the hang of it and you can do it faster, you can start to incorporate your scratches instead of just letting it go, bring it in on a scratch, see if that works for you. Maybe try to do that a little faster, try different scratches. And if it sounds like fun to you, you can also try after you master those first things to now not bring it in on the one, but maybe bring it in on the two. And you don't have to do that all the time, but if you're backspinning live, it could be cool to have all those options to variate between. So start it on the one then bring it in with a scratch, then bring it in on a two, then bring it in normally again. Uh, you have endless options and that what makes it so much fun, that what makes it organic and uh, live. That's what I love about it, that's why I can backspin for hours doing different stuff. I have a little bit more to add to this but we're going to do that in the next episode and for now Practice these techniques, practice, practice, practice and if you have any questions, if anything is unclear Leave your question in the comment section down below so either me myself can help you out or someone else because I know there's plenty of people watching that already mastered these basics and they might be able to help you out as well. It's all about sharing that knowledge. Alright guys, I'll see you soon for our next episode of Turntablism Tips. Make sure you share the video, like the video and if you haven't subscribed to my channel make sure you do because I have plenty of videos on the way and there's already a lot of videos on the channel for you to check out. See you next time guys.